up, I just finished editing that opening travel montage on the brand new Azus ZenBook Pro Duo. This thing is quite a beast. So today in this video, I wanted to run through how we can essentially create faster travel video edits. As travel creators, we are always on the go. So we need a powerful laptop to essentially process our content as fast as possible. Now I know a bunch of you guys have asked me on Instagram, like what computer am I using? And also like how I'm able to edit 4K YouTube content, like this video that you're watching. I'm always shooting in 4K solely because one, I wanna digitally archive my content better like if I'm traveling and I'm capturing some incredible content I don't want to just be shooting that in 1080 because let's say in a year's time a client comes to me and says hey Jake um, can you create an edit or amend or can we buy that or license that content off you sure and if I'm able to give it to them in 4k it's so much smarter and also more valuable for the client than if I'm giving it to them in say 1080 so I need a computer that's able to process 4K content. So working on the Zeus ZenBook Pro Duo, I'm not gonna lie, was a struggle to begin with. <laughs> because I'm a MacBook user, I think anyone that's come from Mac and solely been using Mac, shifting to Windows, it's gonna take some time, shifting to a PC. Because your workflow and the way that you operate the computer, like, those motor neurons are trained for the other operating system. So you gotta give yourself a, a bit of time. Like, I'm, in all honesty, you can't just transition your workflow and expect it to be quick when you've only been using the computer for a day or two. So give yourself time is the first thing. Let's get straight into the juicy stuff, which is the computer, your operating system. What are you running? What is your whip? The 15 inch ZenBook Pro Duo is ideal for professional content creators in search of high productivity and a love for new tech and innovation. The main display is a full 15 inch touchscreen display with the Asus screen pad to give you effortless app multitasking. And I've actually found this kind of interesting. You'll see here that I'm able to like watch YouTube content or drag any kind of content from the main screen down onto this secondary screen. So it gives you more screen and way less distraction. Uh, maybe a little distracted <laughs> if you're watching YouTube videos. The 9th gen Intel Core i9 is there to ensure professional quality tasks such as multi-layer photo or video editing, 3D graphic rendering, or even game live streaming possibilities are super quick. And it just gives you the performance of a desktop in notebook form. Because I'm shooting on a range of different type of cameras, like 360 cameras, GoPro cameras, um, drones, the thing that I need is to be able to process my content as fast as possible. Now, now, the coolest feature of something like this, the Azu Sandbook Pro Duo, is that it actually lifts the motherboard off the table to allow the computer to cool down. If you're editing 4K content, you want about 32 gigabytes of RAM. On my old computer, I was working at 16, and my just my workflow to process 4K clips, even, even sort of playback in Premiere at a quarter res, which is, or an eighth resolution, which is just dropping it down, that would still be super slow. Now, this is able to process 4K content far quicker. I guess the downside for me is that I'm not a, you know, I'm not quite accustomed to using the PC yet. One thing that I struggle with as a travel creator is finding an environment without distractions. You know, I've been shooting all day, I get back to a hotel room, my phone's buzzing, Instagram's buzzing. It's super important for me to speed up my workflow to get rid of those things. You notice right now, for me to get through this travel montage this morning super quickly, I disconnected my Wi-Fi, so there's, there's no Wi-Fi out here, which is really, really good, no distractions. I do not have a phone, like, anywhere near me, um, and I'm in an environment where I can quickly get into flow state. Now, as much as we can brush over that point, it is, I think, the biggest time, the biggest time crucial element is when you have your mind darting around different places. Now, specifically when we jump into the edit, one of the things which slows down editing so much is when you consistently go back to the start of your video edit. If you're, you know, away, grinding away, creating your content, creating your vlog, then you pull the, you know, the playhead back to the start and press play and watch it from the start. That is slowing down your workflow so much. I'm guilty of this. Like one, because I want to look at my content and I want to look at the flow of the video. So I'll press play and I'll watch the video, then I'll, then I'll stop. I'll edit a little bit more. 
It's really important if you want to speed up your workflow to just get through the edit as fast as possible, then go back and start to work on the amendments. Another tip for within that is to make sure that you have all of your sound design, your sweepers, your music, everything ready to go before you even start your edit because it's, you know, it's going to slow down your process if you start editing and then you go, oh, I want to, you know, change up the track. So then you jump on Epidemic Sound, Red Bull Sound Supply, Music Bed, whatever. Links in the description. <laughs> you jump on those music licensing sites to find music, you spend two hours finding a track, you know, that's just wasted you two hours. So make sure you have all of that stuff ready to go before you're even editing. I will spend four hours before I even start one of my travel films just doing that. That is part of the process. What I suggest you do is for any kind of traveling hard drive that you're taking on trips is to create a folder which has your vlog assets in it. I like to have all my sound effects, my sweepers, and anything that's identifiable that I use consistently across my content in a folder that comes with me everywhere I go. So now let's jump into Premiere and talk about a keyboard shortcut and a super fire tip which can turn over an Instagram edit within a couple of hours. So the first thing that we're gonna do when we're in Premiere is we're just gonna simply make sure that we set our M key on the keyboard here to marker. To do that, all you have to do is go to edit and uh, keyboard shortcuts. Now, notice how the M key on this keyboard says marker. If yours doesn't say that, go add marker. You can see that and just drag that over to the M key or just click here and make sure that M key is selected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ingest a couple of my clips. So to do that, I'm simply gonna go into my folder find some of my content. So this one I'm gonna drag in, drag and drop. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of these clips and set my in and out markers. Okay, I like this bit here. So I'm gonna hit I and then I'm gonna hit space bar. I'm kind of flying the drone back from the waterfall and maybe we like to get to there. And then I'm gonna hit O. So I've set the in and the out marker on that clip. So double click on the clip to bring it up in here and again, go through and find the section of the clip that you like. So if I go into my sound library assets, which I suggested you guys do um, and create and keep that on your hard drive and find a track, I'm gonna go through and find. Nice, this is really nice and visceral. I really love this. It's like perfect waterfall music. So maybe I wanna start it here. Okay, so we've got our marker key set. We've got our track already in there. Now, all we have to do is make sure that this top section is highlighted, not down the bottom, because if the bottom section is highlighted, notice that, then my track's gonna get the markers, but I want my timeline to get the markers. And then when we hit play, the space bar, we're then gonna use the M key to set markers on the beat. So let's have a go at that. Then all I have to do is make sure all my clips are highlighted over here in my bin. So I'm gonna go sh hold shift, make sure all of these clips are highlighted. And then I go into clip and we go into automate to sequence. Notice that, automate to sequence and the placement we want at numbered markers. So not sequentially, we want that at numbered markers. So now what's gonna happen when I hit okay is all of those clips that I've captured Super quick, super easy. All you have to do now is go through and, and just tighten that up a little bit and you've pretty much got yourself an edit. The story element of any travel creator's work or any travel film is probably the most important. It's that thing, it's the glue which ties the film together. One of the things I've started doing specifically with my work is writing out a shot list. So for me, it might be having five different forward moving hyperlapses, five different side moving or, or panning hyperlapses, X amount of tight shots, X amount of drone shots, um, X amount of 360 content, so that when I am on my shoot and I, when I am traveling, I know that I've got this variety of content to come back and work with as an editor. Now, that's shots, right? But that's not actually story. There's two ways you can go about it after you've got the shots, right? You ingest the content as fast as you can and you start to pick out the gold. We've spoken about that on a lot of different travel video edits. And it's, you know, specifically going, okay, these are the clips, this is the, these are the nuggets of gold that are gonna make my travel film epic. Or what I find, which is way faster, is to actually write a narrative. Now, storytelling is personal. It's something which should come from inside. It's something which you could you should sit down and and physically write out. I have done that like with my island travel film, I did that with the Huga film, I did that. It's, it's a way to then reduce 
excess content and to be like, okay, I specifically need to find some content which matches this part of the story. Quite simply, this is just giving you goalposts to work towards. So if this is your song, it's three minutes long, and then you have a story talking about the experience or sharing that raw moment or feeling, then you're able to fill in the gaps and find the pieces from your travels to match that narrative. It's gonna speed up your process, writing out a story. I'm gonna put a link in the description of all the tech specs and info of the Azus ZenBook Pro Duo. Um, so you guys can check out this computer further. But if you are looking for something and you're a travel editor looking to speed up your workflow and your productivity whilst you're on the road, I highly recommend checking out this computer. If you guys have enjoyed this video, if you learned anything about speeding up your workflow, punch the thumbs up button, share it with a buddy and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you're new around here, the channel's all about travel, creativity, hopefully some inspiration. There's a GoPro photography challenge on this month. It's a community challenge. Check that out as well. And I'll see you guys in the next upload. Ciao. Peace.